Hi everybody, it's Janet here for Mooncusser Art along with Julius. And we are going to create a colorful challenge. I'm inviting resin artists, YouTubers to create some vibrant and colorful art to hopefully inspire everybody through the coronavirus and self-isolation that everybody is practicing. Um, this piece is about 15 different colors. I'm going to take you through my process and show you how I kept the colors from getting too muddy. And I hope you take the challenge. I look forward to hearing your comments and sharing your videos with me. If you do take the challenge, comment on this video and leave a link to your challenge piece and let's see if we can't blow up YouTube with some really pretty and colorful art that makes us all get through this crisis together. Thanks so much and stay tuned. Here we go. I'm down here in my studio and I'm kind of backtracking a little bit. I said that I would pull out my little test swatches of color that I make so that we can get a good look at how I made those choices. These are all my color puddles and I'm really pleased with the way these colors work together. Uh, I did spray paint my canvas to seal it. And those are the ones that I used. Uh, again, everything's going to be linked up to um, the description box. So check it out there. Let's get started on creating this colorful challenge. Hi again, it's Janet here for Moon Cusser Art. And I am going to be working on a large canvas today. This is a 36 by 24 canvas and it has been sealed as the base color and primer is rust-oleum spray paint so i like to use that it gives me a good base of color and it seals in that canvas nicely uh, the canvases that i use are from michael's this is their uh, level three canvas so it's a gallery wrapped canvas so it's nice heavyweight and, um, but even though they say that they are gessoed, I have found that I still want to seal it again myself. I've had issues where I've been like, oh, it's gessoed. I'll just pour on it. And I end up having uh, spots of resistance on there. So I like to seal them again. And I've got my uh, nitro gloves ready. I have my my mask is ready and I've got my torch as well as my heat gun and all kinds of other um, tools are handy for me. I like to keep everything very close by to my working station so that I can grab it as I'm working because there's nothing worse than it not being <laughs> within arm's reach. So I try to be prepared. I have my fan set up in the window. That's going to be getting turned on. I will be using, uh, this is resin from Better Boat. I used it on my last pour and I was very pleased with the results, how it worked. It's a little on the thicker side, but I like that in resin. Some people like it thinner, but I like a thick resin. Um, and you can see by the color in the bottles that let's see which one do i have here this is the hardener so the hardener is clear and the epoxy resin itself has a slight blue tint to it and that's to help to keep any kind of uv from yellowing the resin so i'm going to be batching that up and i have all my colors ready to go i've got a lot of colors so i'm probably going to work in stages on this canvas because when you have a lot of color that takes a lot of time to mix it all and if you spend all your time mixing up your resin and getting all your colors worked out what happens is 
it starts setting up on your canvas and you run out of time to work it on your canvas. So like I said, I'm probably going to be working this canvas in a couple of stages to get the first layer on. Um, and that's my plan. So let's get started and see how this goes. All right, here we go. Starting by putting a layer only on half of the canvas of the clear resin. I do that because I like to get it to help with the flow. And now I'm going to start building in some of the colors. Now remember, I said I was going to use a lot of color. So by working on half of my canvas, I'm laying out nine colors just on half of the canvas. So you can see it's blues and greens, and I don't want to get rid of too much of that yellow background that I put. I really liked it a lot, and I love the blue and the greens up against that yellow. It's just so pretty. So we're going to get some ribbons of color out there, torch it, warms it up, and then we can start tilting the canvas a little bit, helping those pigments in the resin to blend. Now remember, I had said that the Better Boat resin is, it's got a really high viscosity rate to it. It's thick. I like a thick resin because I feel like I get a little bit of control out of it, but at times it can be difficult to tease out some of the effects that you want to get to. All right, and now we move on to the second half of this canvas. Again, it's a 24 by 36, so it's a pretty good sized canvas. And I'm putting on more of the clear and allowing it to kiss up to the resin that I poured earlier. And now I'm going to be adding a whole nother variety of colors. So the first half, I used a total of nine different colors up there. Down on this half, I'm going to use a total of eight colors. Now, I, I do those ribbons trying to tie it into the upper half, um, what will become the upper half of this canvas. And I really like these purples and um, oranges and yellows. It's just, it's a real lively piece. And that's exactly what I was going for. I wanted to make this one bright and vibrant and it's really working that way. So I don't want to overwork this again. This is a total working time because I did two batches of resin. Each one was 14 ounces and uh, that gave me a lot more control. I was able to focus on one part of the canvas and then move on and focus on the other part and then I'm going to tie these all in when we start working on that second layer. So a total work time of one hour in two stages. So working this piece in such a way that I have um, my pinks and purples down on one half and my blues and greens on the other half this is going to keep the colors from getting too muddy. Um, again, I, I wanted, my intention was from the beginning that I needed to get a lot of different colors on here. And when you're trying to work a lot of colors together, you always run the worry that the colors are going to get muddy on you. If I'm trying to keep them in their color groups, so the reds and the oranges, yellows, purples, and then the blues and the greens in their color groups, they're going to complement each other. Um, I allow for a little bit going on there, but I'm working now with the heat gun and the torch, and that's letting me add a little bit more detail for the tie-in, and then uh, we'll let that sit and cure overnight and come back tomorrow. All right, here we are the next day, and I batched up, uh, I think it was 32 ounces of the Better Boat resin. And again, I'm putting a clear coat down. I like to use this 
tool. It has a nice serrated edge to it, so it gets a nice spread of the resin evenly. And then I go back with my gloved hand and make sure I'm bringing it right up to the edge because there's not, nothing worse than to see gapping at the edge. And a quick hit with the torch, get those bubbles out. And then I'm going to let it sit here on the canvas for about mm, 15 minutes. And in the meantime, I'll mix up my colors. Okay, we'll start putting on some of the tinted resin. Now, here on this second layer, I'm trying to use tints and keep the resin transparent. So any colors that I'm using, anything that I poured on the first layer is going to be able to shine up through the second layer. It's going to build depth and it's going to also enhance the colors from that first layer and really make this piece more unified. I have a total of, I think it's 10 colors that I'm going to be pouring out on this second layer. And again, I'm going to be doing the entire board in one shot, or I, I keep calling it a board. It's a canvas, um, but I'm going to be working that whole canvas in one layer now. I love that purple. That's the uh, Pearl X uh, Reflex Violet. And, ugh. It gives off some really great effects. It's one of the highlights of this piece. I zoomed in on this corner so that you can better see how I'm working these areas. Uh, again, you can look right through the transparent colors that I'm laying on top here. And I want them to blend a little bit so I'll be using the heat gun and the torch to get the effects out of it that I want. Add a little bit more color over in this spot. Get the white on there because we always like to brighten things up with the white. Now if you notice, the resin really isn't moving very much. Again, the Better Boat resin is very thick. And it, at this point in time, I have to use the torch to heat it up and that'll help it to move. But I also produce quite a bit of smoke. Now, I have the fan going in the window and I'm wearing my respirator, and, uh, but it, it got pretty, uh, pretty intense with the smells downstairs. So it was a good thing that I was ventilating the room. So I hit it with the torch to get it really warm and then come in with the heat gun on a medium setting. I'm not using any additional nozzle tips on there. I'm just blowing the resin around, combining those colors. The weight that I used, this is from um, the Epoxy Resin Store. This is their Flow Art pigment. Um, they're white and it's really a super white. It gives a nice bright white color to it and you can use it to get some nice fine lacing like I'm producing here. I'll be sure to put a link on the description box for this video and if you are interested there will also be a code that will give you a discount on anything that you order from the epoxy resin store really nice company great people working there so working in a method where i'm choosing smaller areas on this canvas it's giving me the ability to really focus on building color on top of color now i i hope you guys like how bright this piece is because I can tell you that I was a little out of my comfort zone but I also knew that it was something that I really needed to do and work on and 
I'm so happy that I did it. And I would like to challenge you to try working with a lot of color and go outside your comfort zone. Because as I'm pouring these puddles here on top of one another, I'm looking at combinations that I've never used before. And those are the things that help us to improve our work and explore other things that maybe we haven't tried before. All right, I'm just going to keep working on areas that I really feel like need my attention and tweaking some spots and teasing out the effects and building that layer. You can see as I blow it out, it just stretches that white and it produces the really nice lacing like that. Another hit with the torch, warm it up, spread it out with the heat gun. All right, you see that blue? I'm pouring the purple, and so that's the Perlex Reflex Violet, one of my faves. Along comes Liquitex Ink. This is their Deep Violet, another pretty color in my book. I'm trying to cover up that blue. That blue I have had on my shelf for three years. I got it from Artie Sue. It's a lovely pigment. Her products are great, but that blue is a dud <laughs> in my book. <laughs> so I decided I need to really cover that up in this piece. Everything was so exciting and that peacock blue was just just so dull. So uh, really focusing on having just a little bit peek out. You know, it is what it is. It's there. I liked it a lot against the yellow, but it just wasn't holding up when I started working with the other colors. So bye-bye, peacock blue. We'll see you another time. Maybe. Now it's time to start working on the other end of the canvas. I have to tie in some greens and blues to make it have balance. Now that green that I just poured out, I'll tell you what, that is the stunning star on this work. That is the black diamonds. That is, let me look it up for you here. It is Hunter Green, and I added a couple of drops of 99% isopropyl alcohol. I always do that in my powder pigments because what that's going to do is it's going to allow it to combine easier into your resin. It kind of breaks up the powder a little bit, and it also helps it to react differently to the other pigments. So by laying it side by side, pushing it into one another with the heat gun and using the torch, it really works nicely. Um, but that green, you know, for me, I'm way out of my comfort zone. I don't usually like green with pinks, but this time it's spectacular. All right, let's speed things up here a little bit. I'm going to keep layering in small areas of extra color, building the greens and the purples and the blues, tying everything in together, looking for how can I balance this piece out a little bit and combine the colors so that it really goes together. But it takes a lot of time, a lot of patience, and I get there. I just keep working it. Um, this second layer, I believe my total time from mixing and setting everything up, I was working on this for well over an hour and uh, didn't have any issues with the resin scorching on me. I just wanted to keep tweaking out the details and uh, 
It's really a beautiful, happy, happy piece. All right, I'm just going to finish up this corner, tease out a few more effects there. And let's get you guys down off of the tripod. I'll do a little flyover, get a close up look at some of these effects. There's that reflex purple, and then, oh, uh, that green in there, boy. These combinations are really a lot of fun. I hope you guys take the challenge and do some of these color combinations and just push yourself on color a little bit. You'll learn a lot. I know I did. If you break it up, it's a very doable job. Now, it's the next day, and I took some photographs. See those little specks? Those are pinhole bubbles. Now, I had torched the surface and got all the bubbles out, but they came to the surface while it was underneath the cover, and it's not up to par, so I'm going to have to clear coat this one more time. Well, I thought I'd bring it outside and show you how that top coat worked out. I used the Epoxy Resin Stores Clearcast 7000. It's a very low viscosity resin, and I only needed 16 ounces to cover a 24 by 36 inch piece. And it has a perfect shine on it now. Makes me much happier. Well, there we go. That's the end of the project. This is Phantasmagoria, and let me tell you something, I don't think I've ever had a more colorful piece that I've produced. I really pushed myself, I challenged myself by using colors that I don't normally use. I've never put green alongside of pink, so that was a crossover for me for sure. And I hope you guys will accept my challenge. I would really be excited to see what you come up with. I think it's a lot of fun if we all work together and keep ourselves involved in our artwork. So leave me a comment, give me a link to your video, and I will definitely check it out and comment back. Hope you enjoy this challenge, and I look forward to what you make. If this is your first time watching my channel, I hope you enjoyed the creation of Phantasmagoria. And I'm going to put a couple of links up to some other videos that you might enjoy. Don't forget to subscribe and by all means, enjoy creating art.